to your Google Home and all the stuff. The noun home is usually defined as a house, apartment, Shop. or other shelter Shop. that is the usual residence of a person, family, or household. The adjective home is usually defined as of, relating to, or connected with one's Shop. home or country, domestic. The adverb home is usually oh, come defined on. as to, You're done. toward, or at home. You don't? Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. I've got my hands on the remote switch with a smart socket. This is obviously IKEA Trot Free set and it comes with, as I said, two button controller and a smart socket capable of passing through 13 apps. This is a UK version as you can see the plug. So you can connect devices up to nearly 3000 watts of power. Now, about the switch or about this button, we're going to focus on that in the next video. So for now, let's talk about the uh, socket and how to integrate it with the Node-RED. But first of all, just be aware, you can use them both together without anything else. Just pair them together and you're ready to go. Or uh, you can link it to a hub as well and have ability to set some timers. But if I'm honest, if you're going to watch this video, you'll understand why IKEA hub isn't that great. Anyway, everything aside, so this is a socket. Let's learn how to control it and how to create timers in Node-RED with a nice graphical interface because, let's face it, smart sockets without timers, they're not too good. And the benefit of that is those timers are run locally. So if your internet goes down, you will be still able to keep track of your timers and operate the smart socket successfully. Now this socket is obviously a Zigbee device, which means you will need some sort of a Zigbee stick. And I'm using 2531, CC2531 uh, USB to Zigbee stick, which is uh, great for home automation. And I've used it before with all my IKEA products. If you're interested in all the products from IKEA and how they work in Node-RED, there's a playlist here for you. To pair your IKEA socket with a Zigbee stick, it's very easy. All you have to do is just to connect it to power. There is a hole at the bottom of the socket. Use a pin or something to press it and hold it for a couple of seconds and the socket will enter the pairing mode. And after a couple of moments, you should see that in your log. Before we're gonna start with the showcase, mute your smart speakers because they will like to talk to me and I'm going to call the name for sure. So let's start with a smart functionality from the speakers. So it is enabled for Amazon devices and for Google devices as well. So let's start with Google. Hey Google, turn IKEA socket off. Okay, turning IKEA socket off. Thank you. You're certainly very welcome indeed. Great, if you have a follow-up mode, it's best to tell them to, you know, thank you otherwise uh, they'll listen to commands for different speakers alexa turn bench on as you can see integration works beautifully so let's do this uh, with uh, the dashboard as you can see on the dashboard itself uh, the device already shows the status on because it recognizes it and we can actually toggle it with a, a socket as well switch so as you can see that works as well and it updates the status and we have uh, access to timers so we can actually set the timers and there is virtually no limit to how many timers you can have you can add as many i have two timers and each set of timers comes with a week schedule so you can have timers on monday uh, tuesday etc etc so it's brilliant and it's quite easy to reproduce and add new timers i've made a timers module so uh, how timers works basically you just enter your time you want you set it but then once once the time is set let's do it again because i didn't set you'll have to press the button to set it same goes for the time off let's uh, put it at nine o'clock and then you have to press the button to set it. and once this is set it will tell you that the timer has been set too if you don't like the timer or you just want to run it on a couple of days you can modify the days if you don't like it just press the reset and it will reset everything for you. It's that simple. And changes made into um, this end from the dashboard will reflect on the smart uh, devices. Like in a Google Home, you'll see that light is right now 
um, on and if I go to Google Home app and click on IKEA socket you'll see that IKEA socket is also on. Before we start there are two tutorials I want you to take note of. First of all we want to talk about Google Assistant on Noldred and I've talked about it before and uh, if you follow this link on the screen right now you'll have everything explained how to add Google Assistant devices to Noldred. In the same manner we're going to use uh, Amazon device and no dread. So I've got this tutorial in here explaining everything. So you are expected to follow this as well. Now, in order to make this work, I've created two devices: once, uh, once in G um, Bridge and once in the Alexa skill. So uh, diving into the no dread, you will have a connectivity with both smart speakers. This is the dashboard itself. As you can see, I can update the dashboard controls and they will uh, basically reflect whatever happening with the socket itself. Now the timers also are interactive. So if you set the timer, let's set this timer and let's set this timer. You have to actually press set to make the timer um, be valid. And then if you don't want to run it on the specific days, you can select this as well. If you don't like it, just reset everything. It will show you that the timer is disabled. Now the timer is fully module, so you can deploy more than one timer. And you can actually uh, see two timers in here, but there is no limit to how many timers you want to have, unlike with other systems. Also, those timers are local, which means if everything goes to hell, uh, your timer will be unaffected. First of all, don't panic just yet. In a second, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to explain this floor. It's actually not that difficult when you break it down into parts. So uh, let me highlight a couple of things so you would know what we're dealing with. Uh, in, at the bottom of this floor, we have two sections. This is a timer number two and this is a timer number one. And I spoke about timers before. So if you want to get some more information uh, about how they work, just visit the write-up uh, from before and you'll be all happy. Now, these timers are connected to the MQTT, uh, which is uh, here, node, and they can connect to a single node, which I'm going to reconnect later. Uh, however, for the purpose of illustration, I've just used it in here uh, as a separate node. Now, in here, we have Alexa controls. In here, there's a Google Assistant using Gbridge. And in here we have actually MQTT to Zigbee to MQTT controls. So it's not that difficult. So let's zoom in and start uh, talking about it in detail. In order to receive an update from the IKEA smart socket, you have to send an empty state into this uh, topic. So the topic is Zigbee to MQTT, which is your default uh, MQTT uh, topic. And then you have a device name and then get. And what you're sending is this payload and that will give you information which looks like this so it'll have a state and it'll have a link quality now that information is being posted by the display uh, and sent to that overall or main topic which is zigbee and then device name and then i don't know why but uh, the statuses are sometimes doubled so i rate limited and discarded intermediate uh, intermediate messages so everything sent within the same second is going to get dropped that way i only get one information uh, now before i'm going to talk about the dashboard uh, i'm going to explain uh, further connectivity now to actually control the plug you need to use uh, that topic ending with set and are you supposed to submit on or off? I've used the capital on and off to, to control it and I can issue it with the different um, devices. So in a dashboard, I have a socket switch and it sends that on and off payload as a string. Uh, when I'm using a Google Assistant, I'm using Gbridge. And in the same way, uh, I can submit that based on the voice command, I can submit that on and off. Now there are two ways of doing it. I can either use this method, which is uh, using a switch node, because the payload is one or zero, and I need to translate it into on and off. So I'm just using a simply a change node to change the payload into something I want. Or I can use a simple if conditions in a function node with two outputs at the bottom, as you can see here. 
and obviously if it's x equals 1 there's on if x equals 0 there's off same principle it looks a little bit neater with uh, function nodes so in a final flow that you can download you'll see this function node instead now because uh, when the socket updates you want that update to be visible in google app uh, you need to also update the state uh, via um, this node in here so that node in here is going to send a message with this um, link quest state quality on off and we want to modify this and uh, drop that uh, state into a payload and then we can update our bridge and uh, use the bridge topic to do it now once we have this sorted let's take a look at alexa devices and uh, in here we have this uh, alexa skill which which can be used to uh, imitate device so just create one and set your device and then in the same manner we will be uh, translating this message from true or false because that's what uh, this node sends true or false and you can use either again switch node or you can use uh, this function node that uh, is a if statement for true and false and once once again we are sending the payload into that uh, topic for MQTT where we setting the socket so as you could see that was fairly simple so let's talk about the dashboard itself now dashboard itself in order to uh, receive a status update on the dashboard uh, I'm going to use text and the text can be actually colored if you're going to use this format so I'm setting a color and I'm using that setting as a message color and I'm setting it to a message payload which in my case is going to be on and off and that's the trick for it and then there is a short script that basically checks what kind of uh, message I received in the payload from that state update and then sets appropriate colors I've got green, red and black if it's not updated and uh, for template message, uh, this is just a picture. If you don't want it, you don't have to use it. Uh, there's also notifications. So if the status changes, you will display on-screen notification for three seconds. And that's pretty much everything from here. Uh, I've talked about the socket switch as well. Now, I'm going to mention importing uh, timers into this project because uh, you can copy and paste this and it's all great then you can configure your timer in here by giving it a number and setting a payload in this case payload have to be on or off done and then you can apply the settings by pressing the button I need to deploy it and don't want to deploy it in here because this is just a copy and paste uh, from another a system but there is one thing that you have to be aware of when you initially paste your timer or two timers you will end up in a dashboard with something like this which is really really annoying as you can see you have a duplicates here now those duplicates are kind of in order so this is a correct order the things should be there but the items are duplicated so what you have to do is just create another group or organize it and then move the timers manually where it's supposed to be now the timers the elements on the first position uh, are the same so this is element for the same timer this is element for the same timer this is element. So if you're gonna select uh, the position of the duplicate one or two you're gonna always pick this element that belongs to it's the same timer if you look at if you look at my dashboard right now this is how it looks basically this is what you should see on the screen uh, and this is the organization of the timer so uh, they are placed correctly on here mostly because it's a different project but when you initially deployed everything's gonna be so mixed up and elements not going to stack as nice in here so you have to just go and follow uh, the order now the order is also displayed in the write-up so if you want to have an order handy uh, when you're manipulating things uh, then you will uh, just open the link in the description and follow it so the order in here is going to be uh, the text which is not visible in here this is a color picker one then button color picker two then button two then the reset and then monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday and that's pretty much everything now in here you'll notice there are missing spaces so if you want to stack them one underneath the another you have to add empty spaces and you can get the spaces directly from the menu by adding a spacer and selecting a spacer 
size. If you want more information, everything is included in the article in the description of this video. Now, let me know what you think about IKEA devices. I promise I'm gonna take a look at the button uh, in the next video and we're gonna do some cool stuff with it because there are a couple of more functions I'm gonna talk about with this button. Now, if you're interested in more content, I do not have a posting schedule. So if you follow me on social media, which is linked also in the description, you'll get a notification when there is an article or a video. Obviously use this YouTube, you know how to use the YouTube. So guys, thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye. Works beautifully. So how about a Google device? Hey Google. Turn smart submarine, Dreamcast, serial port, Katisar computer tube, among others. What? Uh, so if you're interested in that, you probably want to check. <laughs> Come back. Pairing IKEA smart plug is very easy. Use a pin or SIM card pin uh, to poke the bottom hole. Bottom hole. Poke the bottom hole. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's the video demonetized.